Hello there and welcome back to my channel or if you are new here then welcome. Now today I wanted to show all of my high-end eyeshadow palettes. I was asked about this in a video a while back where I was decluttering drugstore palettes and kind of showed my drugstore palettes all at the same time. So I did get some questions about my high-end eyeshadows. Now I do have them on these little crates, kind of have like little mini palettes over here, some excess. And then I have this drawer right here with some. So I just want to go through them and just show what I have. And I won't be doing any swatches of all the palettes because this video would be really long if I showed this like every single swatch for every single palette. So I'm just going to be swatching a few as I go along in my video. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm just going to start with these two small containers first. These were just some mini palettes that I had excess of that wouldn't fit into my larger containers, but I have this one separate. I keep some of my favorite palettes off to the side in a little basket to themselves. So I wanted to go ahead and do this one because I will forget it. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Starlet Eyeshadow Palette. I love this palette so much. I'm all the time using it. It's It sits in a little basket that I keep some of my most favorite eyeshadows in and I just really enjoy this one. Let's watch a few of these because I'm not going to swatch all the shades in every palette because that would just make this video really long and I don't I don't know if people would really want to sit through a video that long, so I'm just going to swatch a couple of shades per palette. I think that that's, you know, good enough so you can at least see the formula, if, if there are some palettes that maybe you hadn't tried before. And then we have this one from KKW Beauty, which isn't even a brand anymore, and this was the Eye Contour Duo in the Light Shade. I know for a while these were really popular because they were just so simple and easy. There's only two shades in this one, so I can go ahead and swatch both of these. Kind of for me, they look similar on my eyes, but I still did like it. I felt like the formula wasn't bad at all, and I did wear it quite a bit. But I haven't used it in a long time, though. Okay, then I have the ABH Norvina. These are the two minis. This is Volume 1 and then Volume 2. I got both of these at TJ Maxx, and I never did get Volume 3. Now, these are pressed pigments. I'm just going to swatch a few of these, maybe about two shades. But these are really nice quality. If you like pressed pigments, these are really nice. Mine did get a little crumbly. It was kind of like that when I purchased it from TJ Maxx. I mean, it wasn't messed with or anything, but it's just these are really soft shades. And they can break really easily. One kind of has like a shift to it, if you can see that. And we have volume two. Just watch a couple of these. Watch the green. I'm going to try to swatch at least one matte and then one shimmer from each palette. Yeah, I can see those. But if there's any palette that, you know, maybe you want to see full swatches on, I could always maybe include that at a later video. I just feel like nobody might not want to sit through me swatching every single shade. So I thought maybe doing at least two shades per palette would be helpful, at least some. Then I had these two from one size. These were from a holiday collection uh, maybe two years ago. This one is in the shade Golden Cocoa. Watch a shimmer shade as well. It's that way you can see the formula. These were nice palettes. They had a lot of pigment to them, so they really, I feel like they probably would have worked on a variety of skin tones. Then I had this one, which was Copper Cider. And we had this shimmer shade. It's really nice neutral shades. Then I had one from Give Beauty. This is their ICN color palette in Simple Kind of Life. This was an all matte palette. I do use this one pretty good amount, but I do mostly prefer shimmer shades. Okay, I have one more little small container of palettes. So we'll start with this one right here from 
Huda Beauty. This was the Amethyst Obsessions palette. As you can see, I really have been, I really dig into this one. Let's watch the matte shade. And let's watch this one right here in the center. This was the only one I got out of these little palettes like this that had like the gemstones and stuff. This was the only one I ever got. I wish I'd gotten more of them because they are nice quality, but I mean, I probably don't need them. There's a few more here, so I'll swatch this deepest matte shade. Let me show you three different shades out of that palette. And then I had all of these from House Labs. They're little four-way eyeshadow palettes. I think there were eight in total. Nine? Yeah, nine. Okay, nine. And I did end up picking up all of them. I don't think you can get these now. They used to be still available on Amazon. Some of them still might be. This one was in the shade Runway. I will say that the quality on these was hit or miss. Some of them performed really well, and then some of them did not. Some of them were just a little bit hard to blend on the eyes. I, It's been a long time since I've used them, so I don't really remember who was best or not. I'll have to use them again to really see. But I just, I do remember that being an issue. And they all had a shade kind of like this. They, they feel like the ColourPop Super Shock shadows. They kind of have that bouncy type of formula. Now, the Super Shock shadows are way better, but these did have a formula similar to that. This one was in the shade Seduction. I think the matte formula was always better than the shimmer formula in these palettes, too. And then this was the one that was made more like the Super Shock shadow. This one was in Pay. And I'll swatch the regular shimmer in this one. They just feel like really dry formula. I don't know how best to describe that. After Hours. And then we'll do the more creamy formula. This one is poolside. Hmm. This palette and that last palette would probably make a good pairing, like if you use both of them together, that black and blue, or, or I should say that's more, that kind of sheared out to more of like a gray black, and then I'll swatch a regular shimmer in this one. Kind of go back and forth. Then we have Disco. I will say these shades can look like liquid metal, basically. This one is Every Day. This one I know is one that had really good quality. I really like this one, but I like neutral tones, so of course. But I do remember the quality on this one being good because this was the one I used the most. And then the last one here was Fantasy. Got these more purpley tones. I 
I believe this was one that I was really kind of poor quality. This one wasn't the best. If I remember correctly, that one wasn't really the best one. You can kind of see how that matte shade did. Then we had this little mini one from Rare Beauty. This was the Sincerely Me Mini Eyeshadow Palette. I have a video on this one where I do two looks, so if you want to check that out, I will have that link for you above. Do a shimmer shade and then I'll swatch the pressed glitter as well, which I know I will regret because it'll go everywhere. The Rare Beauty eyeshadow formula isn't bad. It's not the worst I've used, but I think this is where the brand could really improve. The complexion products are perfect, but the eyeshadows could use a little bit of work. And then I'll swatch that glitter for you in the center. Probably should have saved this palette for last, considering that that pressed glitter is probably not going to come off now, but we'll see how it goes. I have the Tarte Baby Bloom palette. Which I love Tarte, because they have those basic neutrals that I love so much, so Tarte's one of my favorite brands. so. You'll be seeing a lot of their palettes later, especially when I get to more of the bigger size palettes. And oh my gosh, I have so many on my list that I want from this brand. Like they have some holiday sets and stuff. <laughs> they can pull me right in, especially because they have such pretty packaging. This one's from Urban Decay. This is the Naked Half Baked palette. It's wanting to reflect pretty bad. Okay. Looks like this. Let's swatch this deepest mat. I'm just swatching a couple of them for you so you can at least see. Formula. That's nice. That's a nice pigmented brown shade. That's pretty. I feel like Tarte and Urban Decay are kind of brands I really do enjoy. I know, I know they're very probably basic, but that's what I like. And they make those palettes that I really do enjoy and love, so. Probably seeing, you'll be seeing a lot more of Urban Decay as well in this video. And then I'll swatch this shimmer shade. Just watch a couple of them. And that's the last of my little mini baskets here, so I'm going to move on now to the larger baskets. Okay, we got the first big container right here, but before I go in with any of these, I am going to go in with some other high-end palettes that I keep them in a separate little basket, kind of like my favorite palettes right now that I'm using quite a lot. So we'll start with those, and the first one will be the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. You know what? This palette might actually have recently become my most favorite. I it might have topped the Urban Decay Wild Greens. I don't, I don't know yet. They're close, but I cannot put this palette down. I love it so much. I have been using it nonstop. Whenever I'm not filming and I'm just doing makeup just because, I'm always reaching for this palette. This palette is absolutely gorgeous and it is definitely a favorite of mine. I have a whole video on this palette and I have swatched the whole palette in that video so if you want to see that video I will link that for you above as well. You can see all the swatches there in case you're interested. So I'm only going to swatch maybe a couple in this palette and I'll swatch just a few since I do have that whole video for this palette but oh I love it so much. Let's swatch one of these little shimmer shades. You can kind of hear them moving around in the pan a little bit, like the shadow. I don't know if they're not stuck really well. Might have to fix those later. And then I'll swatch more. one more. I'll swatch this shade. But like I said, go check that video out if you would like to see me live swatch this entire palette. I do have that. And I'm also showing swatches of it outside in natural lighting too, so you can see that. Some of the shades swatch better than others, I will say. 
but on the eyes they perform amazingly all of the shades do so see that swatch isn't the best but that shade performs really well on the eyes one of the next palettes that i keep in that little basket is the glam palette from natasha denona i know this is a staple for many people i will admit that i haven't used this one as much as i would have liked to so i want to use this one again really soon just to get some more use out of it because this is a really beautiful palette as well deepest matte shade some of the shades don't swatch the best in her palettes I will say let's like, see that shade that is a horrible swatch but none of them perform badly on the eyes so I don't like to judge palettes based on the swatches alone because see that shade swatch is pretty bad but it performs beautifully when you apply it on your eyes so just be mindful of that too. Don't let that deter you. If you haven't picked up this palette and you were interested in it, don't let that swatch deter you from it because they don't perform poorly like that on the eyes. They're, they're amazing quality. Next up is the Naked 3 Urban Decay palette, which is one of my favorites from them. I love these pinky neutrals. I'm trying to keep it from glaring. So let's swatch this shimmer shade. Then we'll swatch this matte shade right here. Just a few in each palette. Of course, I'm sure most people have many of these palettes already, but just in case, do you want to swatch a couple of them so you can get an idea of, of the formulas or the color scheme? Now that's the last palette that I keep in my little everyday kind of basket. Now we can move on to the ones in here. First up is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Eyeshadow Palette. This is a stunning, stunning palette. One of my favorites from Huda Beauty, aside from the Mercury Retrograde, this one is really lovely. Really beautiful palette overall. I mean, these, these shades just swatch nicely. The next one is the Mercury Retrograde palette. Definitely a favorite. These shades are really beautiful in here. Let's see, let's swatch this deepest matte. Now, mind you, if anybody comments and says they would love to see me swatch whole palettes, well then the next time I do a video like this, I can definitely swatch every single shade. I just didn't know if anybody would really want to sit through me swatching whole palettes like this that are so big and then I have palettes that are bigger. I just don't know if anybody would want to see that, but if you do, I can I would be more than happy to do that in the future. Okay, let's swatch this blue shade up here, more teal. Now, I do have glitter all over my hands, so some of the matte shades are going to look like they have glitter in them, but it don't. Like, that shade right there is a matte, but it's covered in glitter from my hands, so be mindful of that as well. Then we had the Naughty Nude palette, which this is a really lovely palette. This would probably be definitely a good one. I'm going to swatch this matte shade right here. Be good for fall as well, because it has these pretty warm tones in it. Watch this shade right here. She has these marble shades in her palettes that are really nice. It's kind of more like almost like a topper shade. Then we have the Huda Beauty Empowered palette. I got this one during, I think, one of the sales. One time, I haven't used it a ton. It's a really nice eyeshadow palette, but I haven't really used it a lot. This one has cream shadows in it as well. So let me swatch, let's swatch this matte shade right here. And then I'll swatch some of the creams as well and a shimmer. Swatch this shimmer shade right here. This is basically like almost like a cream formula, like a maybe like a cream to powder formula. Looks like 
absolute liquid metal on the eyes. It's really stunning. And then I'll swatch one of the creams. This one's one of the creams. They might be a little dry. I don't know because I don't use this palette a lot. I'll admit I'm not the biggest fan of cream shadows. I just... They're not really my vibe, so I would honestly have rather these not be in there, but I know that they're probably helpful for a lot of people. Next is this palette from One Size. This is the Visionary Eyeshadow Palette. Really nice quality in this one. Let's swatch this green shade here. I believe I also got this one when it was on sale one time at Sephora, and I see it go on sale quite a lot, so if it was a palette you were interested in, you might want to wait and pick it up during a sale. And why don't we just swatch the green shimmer? Next, this one is, oh, it's hard to show. This is the Stupid Love palette from House Labs. This one reflects really badly, so I'm trying to hold it where you can see it. Swatch this orange shade. This was the first larger eyeshadow palette that this brand put out, but there again, you can't get this one anymore. She doesn't even have powder eyeshadows anymore now in her relaunch, just liquid eyeshadows, which I'm not a fan of liquid eyeshadows, really. I just have too many other eyeshadows to do creams and liquids. I don't really like the shimmers in this palette. The mattes are pretty good. The shimmers feel kind of dry, and... They're just not, I don't know, they're really, you can kind of see, like, they're not, I mean, like, look at that shimmer, and then, this is more, I guess, like a topper shade, but not my favorite kind of formula. Alright, the next one is the House Labs Love for Sale. I feel like out of all the eyeshadow palettes that this company released, this one probably had the best formula, and this one is definitely perfect for fall. It has these beautiful fall tones in it. Let's swatch the black shade in this palette. I think this one had the best formula out of all of the eyeshadow palettes that this brand did release. And then let's swatch this shimmer shade. So I feel like this palette performed the best. Next we have the Sigma and On Canoke palette. This is a really lovely palette as well. On did such a beautiful job, along with, of course, Sigma. Let's swatch this blue shade. I really do enjoy this palette. It's really pretty, and it was my first time ever trying Sigma eyeshadows. And I've been watching On's videos for a very long time, so when she announced that she would be doing a palette, with Sigma, I knew that this was going to be my very first palette with them. Really beautiful. Then we have the Tarte Maneater. I believe this was the, yeah, After Dark palette. I know they launched a new one this year. I have yet to pick it up. I don't know for sure yet if I will or not. Let's swatch the shade. I'm just going to swatch a couple. And this is also a perfect palette for the fall time as well. It has a beautiful color story. And there again, I really love Tarte's eyeshadows. And let's swatch the shade right here. I do have this palette swatched fully in my... I believe, I, yeah, that included in this one in my top 15 I believe palettes for fall so if you want to see swatches of the whole palette I'll also have that video linked for you above as well so you can see all of the shades then. Then we have the Tartlet Full Bloom palette. Oh I love this one. Look at all these beautiful neutral shades that I can drool over for days. There's just I, there's just nothing better to me. Not to mention Tarte's palettes have that just amazing like cookie or vanilla, whatever you want to call that scent. It's so just, I don't know, it's the best scent possible that you could put in an eyeshadow palette. Normally I don't care for scented eyeshadows, but I will definitely make an exception for Tarte.
Hmm. Well, I kind of swatched similar shades, but you get the idea. Next is the Tati Beauty Volume 1 palette. I know that this is no longer even a brand now, and you can't get this eyeshadow palette anymore. I don't really hardly touch it now for that reason, but I need to start using it more because I did buy it, and I need to use it. Now, these, I'll swatch all the four different formulas since there are four different ones. We have the mattes, the sequins, the metallics, and the glitters, so I'll swatch you know, different ones. I'll kind of mix and match. Why don't we start over with the matte black shade. The formula in this palette is beautiful. It's really sad that you can't get this palette any longer. Okay, and then for the sequin, we'll swatch this shade right here. I mean, look how just pigmented and smooth these shadows are. They're really beautiful. Okay, and then how about for the metallic? Let's go over to this more pinky shade. And build that up a little bit more. There we go. I don't think I got enough the first time. There we go. And then for glitter, let's just swatch this one. Really beautiful palette. Okay, next is this palette from Too Faced, and I am not gonna lie, I bought this for the fox. I'm not gonna lie about that. I love animals in crowns. That's just, I love that so much because I really do love animals and they all deserve little crowns. But this was a holiday palette from probably four, three, four, five years ago now. I don't really use it. I'm not gonna even lie about that. Of course, I don't, it's hard to really use all these palettes like this anyway because I do have my favorites that I want to reach for constantly. But I mostly did purchase this one for the fox. I wish I had bought, they had other little animals that year and I wish I had gotten all of them, especially because there was one with a deer. And as you know, deer are my namesake, dearly. I love them so much. They're my favorite, deer are my favorite animal. And then, I can't remember, is this like a pressed glitter? Yeah, it feels like a pressed glitter, so we'll swatch that one too. I'm going to regret that because I just got that chunky glitter off a while ago, but I want to show you. Of course, you can't, you can't get this palette anymore unless you maybe find it secondhand on like Mercari or somewhere like that. Okay, next I have three of the Norvina palettes. This one is volume one. I will say that honestly, these should really be the only colorful palettes I keep in my collection because between... All of them, you'd probably have every color you could possibly imagine. And they're really amazing formula because they're pressed pigments, so you don't have to use a ton to get the pigment to show up. Now, um, I'll go ahead and swatch, I'll swatch this purple shade. And they are really nice quality. I've never struggled with them. Well, now that swatch looks probably pretty terrible, but they perform amazingly on the eyes. And then I'll swatch one of the shimmer shades in this palette. Then we have volume two. It takes me a minute to get these open. There we go. This one has more of like the blues and the greens in it. So let's swatch this deep matte blue. I believe there's like seven or eight of these palettes. I did get all of mine on sale. The first one they had on sale at Sephora one time and then volumes two and three I found at TJ Maxx. I'm not even gonna lie when I say a lot of my high-end eyeshadow palettes, especially my ABH palettes, they definitely came from TJ Maxx. And then we have volume three, which is definitely a colorful palette for fall. This is also included in my, I think it's 15 or 10 plus palettes for perfect for fall. So if you wanna see this whole palette swatched out, then please check out that video. But I will swatch a couple of them for you for this video. 
Let's see, I might just swatch these over here a little bit. So I can just, since these are all the Norvina palettes. And I will say that some of these do give some minor staining. They are pressed pigments, so just be mindful of that. That doesn't bother me, but if it does bother you, you might want to be aware of that. And let's swatch this purple shimmer shade. Okay, this next one is from Aether Beauty. I believe this is called the Moonlight Crystal Palette. They don't write the name anywhere on the palettes, but this isn't any this isn't even a brand any longer, I don't believe. At one point they were having a big sale on their website, so I don't know if the website is still up and running at this time. This palette wasn't like bad quality or nothing, but it it's not it wasn't my favorite. I don't know. I've I've had better. But this is one that I got from TJ Maxx, but I I would have never paid full price for this because I want to say this was like a 60-something dollar palette or 50-something. I'm just going to say no. It was It's not worth that price point. Definitely not. Not in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with it, but I would not have paid full, full price for it. And let's swatch this shade right here in the palette. It is sad that their company went out of business, though. I mean, the shadows aren't bad. I just wouldn't pay that kind of money for them again. But they did have some smaller, like, little quad palettes that were more affordable. There was one that I wish I could have gotten before they went out, but I'm kind of glad I didn't do it anyway. Then we have the Unearthly Cosmetics and Heather Alston palette, the Resurgence palette. I have a whole video on this collection as well if you are interested in seeing that. This is a really beautiful palette. And this was my first time trying Unearthly Cosmetics. I don't have anything quite like this in my collection, so I felt like it was pretty unique to me, like the color story. And I wanted to support Heather because I do enjoy her videos as well. I actually recently just discovered Heather, and I just really started binging her channel, and I really enjoy her content. I mean, these are beautiful shades. Really beautiful. Okay, next is Pure Cosmetics and Barbie. I believe this was an older collection, maybe a few years ago now. And with all the, when the Barbie movie coming out and everything, this would have been a good collection for them to have launched or relaunched right now. And maybe they did, I'm not sure. I don't really keep up much with Pure Cosmetics. I still haven't seen the Barbie movie. I would like to, but... Um, I don't really want to go into movie theaters. I just don't really like being in a closed room like that. So I'm hoping eventually I can watch it later. Because I'd like to see it. Alright, we got another one from Tarte. This is the Busy, Busy Gal Goals palette. And this has like eyeshadows and then two uh, cheek products. We got a highlighter and a blush. So... Let me swatch this matte shade right here, and I'll swatch the highlighter and the blush for you as well. And then let's swatch this deepest shimmer shade too here. Oh, I'm sorry, the palette wants to reflect really badly, so I'm trying to, I don't, I'm trying to keep it from doing that, but it's really hard. Try to hold it maybe about like that, and I'm going to swatch the highlighter and the blush in here. There's the highlighter. And the blush. The blush is really soft. Which I'm into that, but this palette wouldn't be very inclusive to deeper skin tones. I don't know if they had another option for this palette. I'm not sure. I don't even know if you can still get this palette. I've had it for a, a lot of years now. Okay, then we got another one from Tarte. This is their Clay Play, I believe. Yeah, Clay Play palette. There's two different versions of this. I think this is the first one. Then we got like three different like bronzer shades and then of course like um, some eyeshadows. So um, let's see. 
about we swatch the lightest bronzer and then I'll kind of go over. This is an all matte palette, so there's no shimmer shade. So let's swatch the lightest bronzer shade. And then let's swatch this deepest matte over here. I don't use this palette a ton because I'm not really big into all matte palettes. I do love shimmer shades, but if I do use this palette, then I can always reach into another one for the shimmers. And then over here, let's reach into the black shade. All right, then we have the Il Maquillage and Kathleen Lights palettes, one of my favorites, but I will go ahead and say I am very biased. I adore Kathleen. I love her channel. I love her videos, so I am pretty biased, but this is an amazing palette. It was worth every penny, in my opinion. It's simply beautiful. So let's swatch. How about let's swatch this peachy shade? Got a nice peach in there. I mean, I just, this palette is just so beautiful. If you love neutral shades, this is perfect. I mean, just look at that. Look at that. That is beautiful. And I believe that palette is limited edition, but I think it is still available if you are looking to pick it up. It's a really nice one. Okay, then we've got the Natasha Denona Love Palette. Really stunning shades. Let's swatch this more red shade over here. And then let's swatch this shimmer shade right here. I'm just swatching a couple per palette. Then we have the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette, one of my favorites from her. I love pastels. I think they're just so beautiful. And if I'm going to wear colorful makeup, it's probably going to be more than likely a pastel, like on an everyday basis. Now, if I'm going a little bit bold for maybe like Instagram, then I might do something else. But for just day-to-day -day wear, if I want something more colorful, more than likely I am going to be reaching for a pastel. And then let's swatch this shade right here. Shimmer shade. Oh, that just gives you such pretty, beautiful mermaid vibes. So pretty. Then we have the Natasha Denona Retro Glam, another favorite of mine. I just love this color scheme. So pretty and soft. Let's swatch this more pinky shade right here. I'm getting eyeshadow all over this pink blanket. And then let's swatch. Let's swatch this shade. I haven't done like a lighter shimmer shade. Okay, the next we have this Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette. Really pretty palette. Let's swatch this shade right here. Then let's swatch this shimmer shade right here in the palette. I believe this is more like a topper shade, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So really pretty. has a pretty shift to it. And then the last palette in this basket is the Natasha Denona Circo Loco palette. This is the most expensive palette in my collection. This was one of her larger palettes, so these retail for $130. But this one was limited edition, so you can't get this one anymore, I don't believe. My hand is covered in glitter, and it's kind of turned pink from where it's stained. Like, do you see that? So some of these shades might not swatch as well over it anymore. I might have to move, move, but this is the last palette in this basket, and then I'll wash my hands. Let me try to build up that swatch to make it a little more fair. Or that shade, there we go. Because my hand is turning kind of pink, too. <laughs> then I'll swatch this more orangey shade right here. Let me 
really beautiful shades in this palette. If you love bright color, this palette is definitely for you. Okay, so that is the last palette in this basket, so we'll be moving on to the next one, and that will be all of my high-end palettes after that one. All right, we've got the last container here of all my high-end eyeshadow palettes, so let's get started right here. Then I had this one from KKW Beauty. This was with Mario, the Artist and Muse palette. I know this isn't a brand any longer, and... I know people really want the brand to come back, and I believe they've announced that it might be, but it's, I don't believe it's under KKW Beauty anymore. It's something else now. But I know most people talk about the lip liners. I never tried anything other than the eyeshadow palettes, and they're really good quality, I will say. Let's swatch this shimmer, and then we'll swatch this matte in this palette. And I believe this was one of the more popular palettes. This one and the other one she had with Mario. Then we had this one with KKW Beauty and Mario. I don't remember which one was exactly first, if it was this one or the other one. I think this one might have been the first one. I'm not sure. Let's swatch this blue shade. And we'll swatch this matte shade right here. I want to say this palette sold out quite a bit when it first released but now I got mine a lot later like right before she closed her brand down so I, I didn't participate in the initial launch then I had the Anastasia Beverly Hills Nouveau palette this is really a lovely color scheme I just thought this was kind of different I think it's more so because of that pop of lavender in here I really think that's well I, well, I swatched two matte shades and let me swatch a shimmer shade too. I think that lavender shade is just so pretty. And I like that they kind of added it into this palette because it's just like that really little small pop of color. Okay, the next one is the ABH Sultry palette. Now this one I've gotten quite a lot of use out of. As you can see, I've hit pan in one of them and I do have a significant dip in this one it's hard to really show you on camera but this was a really nice palette let's watch this gray shade and this shade right here I'd love to be able to hit pan on more of the shades since the one I did hit pan on, that one's an easy one to do so since that's basically like my skin tone. I used it to set like my eyeshadow primer. Then we had the ABH and Alyssa Edwards palette. Really pretty, colorful eyeshadow palette. We'll do this yellow and we'll do this purple. I always love the yellow in this palette. I just thought it was so pretty. When I first got this, I didn't have many colorful palettes, so that yellow, I just thought that was just so incredible. Next is the ABH Subculture palette. I know there was some controversy with this palette. I don't really know which one I had. I believe they re-released it. I did purchase mine from TJ Maxx, so I'm unsure, but I never struggled with the formula in mine, so I don't know. I can't speak for that. Watch this matte and the shimmer shade. But I never had any issues with it, and I believe this was one I pulled for my fall video as well. I think I pulled this one. I'll have to double check. It's sad. I need to keep these in a separate basket when I do that. But if it is, then all the swatches of this palette will be in that video if you want to see the entire palette swatched. I never struggled with the quality of this one though, so I, I can't speak for all the issues that went on. That was really before I started purchasing high-end palettes anyway. Then we have the ABH Riviera palette, also one that I did purchase from TJ Maxx. A lot of my ABH palettes actually did come from there. 
That's how I got a lot of them. Ooh, that pink is pigmented, but really beautiful. I haven't used that palette in a long time. Maybe I should uh, do a palette bingo with that one. It has some pretty fun pops of color in it. Then we have the ABH Norvina palette. Really beautiful color scheme in this one. Let's watch this shade. And let me swatch this pink shade. I've used the shimmers in this palette quite a bit. This next one was from Kylie Cosmetics. This was a holiday launch a few years back. I'm not exactly sure what year. It's been about maybe three or four years ago, and I love this palette. These tones are right up my alley. I just, I really love them. I think that they really, the hot pink shade is fine, but I personally would have rather that been left out and just put another little neutral in there, but it's still a really lovely palette. I don't even think she makes eyeshadow palettes like this anymore, does she? I think now she has just those small ones that you can find at Ulta, but I love the color scheme of this one. Now, the hot pink shade, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, you know, I'm a neutral girly. So it's not really a shade I wear a lot. And then I had this one from Kylie Cosmetics. This was her peach palette. Really beautiful peachy tones. Quality was always there. Never had any issues with it. If she doesn't make these kind of palettes anymore, that's really, that's sad because these are, these were always really nice or I don't remember struggling with them. It's been a while since I've used them, but I don't remember having any issues. Okay, my next two palettes right here are from Royalty Cosmetics. Now, I did receive these in PR, so I just wanted to be upfront about that, but these are really excellent quality palettes. This is Queen of the Hood. If you really love colorful eyeshadows, this brand is definitely for you, and they're really amazing quality. They're incredibly pigmented. I don't struggle with, with them at all. And these palettes are pretty affordable too for the quality you get. I believe they're like $35. So really nice quality palettes if you're into color. And then we have the Queen of Darkness palette. We got shades like this. This shade is my favorite shade in this whole entire palette. I have done a look on my Instagram using just this shade and a few others, but mostly this one, and it's beautiful. Black shade. I mean, you can see just how beautiful these shades are. Really lovely. And then we got the last one in this row, which was the Anastasia. I believe this was the Prim, yeah, the Primrose palette. I love the packaging on this one. I mean, just look at that. That this, this is my aesthetic, definitely. And then we got two blush shades. I will swatch the blush shades for you as well. Let's swatch the shade. In the shade. I mean, good grief! Look at that shimmer. Beautiful pigmentation. Then I'll uh, I'll swatch the two blush shades. This was a really pretty palette. I believe it was a holiday palette from a few years ago. Now, of course, this is the one that I would use the most. This I can use, but I have to be very, very careful because it is extremely pigmented, as you can see, but a beautiful palette. And as you can see, I don't really go in order by brand. I go really by their size. See, like that one, that, that Anastasia one wasn't with the others because it's so much taller. So I just kind of arrange them by size. So I, I can't really do timestamps for you in the description. So I'm sorry about that because I, they're kind of all over the place. I just squeeze them in here as best I can. Okay, so we got this one right here from Rare Beauty. This was the, ooh, it's reflective. This was the Magnetic Spirit palette. This was a holiday release, but I think you can still actually purchase this, I want to say. Let's just watch these last two shades. They're, these are all shimmer palettes. 
So they make nice companion palettes to others. Then we have this one from Rare Beauty, which is Confident Energy. Also another shimmer, all shimmer palette. This one was released at the same time as the other one. They're really nice palettes, though. I like, can't complain about them at all. And they kind of give you that little pop of color if you're really into colorful makeup. They're so pretty. Okay, next is this palette from Rare Beauty. This is the Give Yourself Grace eyeshadow palette. It has some mattes and shimmers in here, and then a pressed glitter. Just do these two. I'm not going to do the press glitter this time because that makes an absolute mess and I just cannot get it off. But I did swatch a press glitter in her other palette so you can see the formula. That formula hasn't changed. Those pressed glitters, while they're really pretty and I love glitter, they are a mess trying to get them off my hand. And a lot of times they blend in with the other eyeshadow so it, it makes it look like my matte shades have glitter in them. Which now, I wouldn't personally mind that, but I do want my swatches to be as true to the palette as possible. Then I have this one. This is the Come to Play, or Came to Play, Came to Play eyeshadow palette. Their formulas are not... Rare Beauty's eyeshadow palettes, they're not the worst palettes I've used, but I think that this is where the brand could really improve. Like, their complexion products are amazing, but I just find that their, their eyeshadows are not the best quality. They're not horrible, but I, have, I would love to see them improve it a little bit more. Then we have this one, which is True to Myself. Let's swatch this shade. And we'll swatch this shimmer shade. I think what I like most about these palettes is their packaging, if I'm being entirely honest about that. The packaging is where these shine. Okay, then we have Too Faced Better Than Chocolate. I really love these tin packagings. I think they're just so cute. Then we have this, and it does smell, and it does still smell like chocolate. Now, there again, I picked mine up at, let's watch this shade, at TJ Maxx, so... I didn't purchase it when it first launched or anything, but I believe this is quite a popular palette, I think. I might be wrong about that. I know the peach one is. But I think they discontinued the peach one. I don't know about this one. You might can still get this one. And then next is the Sweet Peach palette. Really pretty. Watch this one. And the green shade. I love the green shade in this palette. I think that, honestly, that's one of my favorite shades. I believe they are discontinuing this palette, or they might have already have by the time I'm filming this. Now, one of my most favorite palettes of all time, Urban Decay Wild Greens. I am so amazed that I have not hit pan on any of these shades over here. I mean, I have, I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to show. I have significant pan, I mean, uh, dent, I should say, in those shades. And I'm really surprised that I haven't yet hit pan, but I really love this palette. I know it's pretty hit or miss palette with people, but it is one of my absolute favorites. I use it a lot. I will say that I have kind of put it to the side because I've been using my Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette so much, but I love this palette. It's so beautiful and I have backups of it. Then we have the Urban Decay Naked palette. The original palette that started it all with this company, I believe, or really was popular. Everybody talks about this palette and wants them to bring it back. I'm really surprised that they don't. Since people have requested it so much, you'd figure that they would. 
But I mean, you know, you never know. Maybe they will one day. Then we have the Urban Decay Naked Cherry Palette. This is a really pretty palette. Let's just swatch these two shades right here side by side. I think I might swatch these over here a little bit. Since I have a few more Urban Decay palettes, I'm trying to squeeze here some sh my swatches together. Okay, then we have the Urban Decay and Robin Eisenberg palette. I, I hope that's how you say their last name. Let's see, let's swatch some of these blue tones in the palette. I really love this little pop of blue over here that they had. I thought that was pretty. Especially since the rest of the palette is so neutral. So it's nice to see just a little bit of pop of blue in here. Then we have the Urban Decay Naked Cyber Palette. I believe this was another one that was hit or miss, but for me, I really like this palette because it's so soft. That's really what I like. The only thing, I wish instead of this orange matte, they had done more of a, like a cool tone brown or like a taupe shade in there instead. I just, that shade just stands out to me in this palette. I don't know. I just never really liked that shade in here. I, I don't know what, what it is, but it just stands out to me. That's just personal preference. I just feel like that shade just doesn't, I don't know. I just wish they had put like maybe a taupe shade or a brown or something instead of that one. I just don't really like this shade for this palette. Okay, then we have this mini palette from Tarte. This is the Lights Camera Lashes palette. This come in like a holiday set, maybe like a few years ago now, maybe three. I just, I love Tarte. I just, their neutrals get me every time and every year when they come out with these little palettes like this for the holidays I just I want them every single time these types of shades just pull me right in I mean look how pretty so pretty so soft and then this come in the same little set this is a mini tartlet palette just really pretty this one had just one shimmer shade in it so I'll swatch the deepest matte and then the shimmer shade. I know, I know that if you pretty much own one Tarte palette, you probably own them all, but it doesn't matter to me. They get me every time and I, I fall for it and I'm glad to fall for it. And then I believe this was the last one from this set that was an eyeshadow palette. The other mini that come with this set was a face palette. This is the Big Ego palette. Had more of like these purpley tones in it. Let's swatch one shade over here. And then I'll swatch the shimmer right here. Really pretty shades. Then I have this one from KKW Beauty. This is the Glitz and Glam eyeshadow palette. This was just an all shimmer palette. Well, I don't know. Is that shade a matte? That shade looks kind of like a matte with maybe some shimmer in it. I was about to say it's an all shimmer palette, but uh, I don't know. That, I think that might, that might be like a matte. Let's see. You can tell it's been a long time. No, that's a matte. It's been a long time since I've used palettes like this. And then this little palette from Tarte was also a holiday release. It just says Eye and Cheek palette. And it had a highlighter, a blush, and then four. I don't know if that shade will really show up. So let's just swatch this one and this one. And then I'll swatch the blush and the highlighter in just a second. See, I just love little palettes like this where pretty much all my face steps, well, except for bronzer, are included. I just, I really love that. And there's the highlighter. And there's the blush. Such a pretty blush shade. Yeah, I got the Urban Decay Naked 3 Mini Palette. I really like this little mini. I think it's so cute. Let's watch this shade. 
and then we'll just swatch the shade right next to it. Really cute little travel palette too. All right, we have the Huda Beauty Pastels Lilac Palette. And you can see my most used shade here. Let's swatch a purple. And then we'll swatch this one so you can see that one since I have a big dip in that one. Then we have the Pastels Mint Palette from Huda Beauty. I just, I really love pastels. They're my favorite way to wear colorful makeup if I'm going to wear it. I just find that they're just, I guess it's just, I like soft makeup, so these are just kind of more of my preference. And this is more like a topper shade. And then we have the Pastels Rose palette. Really pretty. Let's swatch this one. And swatch this yellow shade, shall we? Really pretty palettes. Okay, I'm hoping I can squeeze this in over here. If it doesn't look right, I'll re-swatch it and give it, you know. But I was trying to squeeze all of these together since there's only three of them. Okay, we got this Tarte C palette. This is Breezy Eyes. Just this really... Kind of warmy, neutral palette. Let's do these two shimmer shades. Let's do this matte shade and this shimmer shade, I mean. And this next one, the packaging. For those who don't know, pink, white, and gold are my signature colors. My living space is completely decorated with pink, white, and gold. So whenever Tarte does packaging like this, I'm trying to, as you can see, that pretty gold. I am all over it. And this palette, oh, these shades, oh my gosh, they pulled me right in. So pretty. Then right after that one, we have this the Sweet Tart Double Shot palette, which has the pretty swirls in it as well. I knew when the first time I saw these palettes, I had to have them. They are just so stunning, so beautiful. I love the swirls in there. Just makes me think of pretty little desserts, which was the point. I mean, look at that shimmer shade. That's like liquid metal. Okay, then we have another one here from Kylie Cosmetics. This was her, I think it was called the Purple Palette. This had like these really pretty purpley tones. But I've had this palette a long time, so it might be kind of a little hard pan. I haven't used it in a long time. No, no, it's still, swatch is still nice. Shimmer shades come. Let's see if I can build that up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So you can see the true color of that shade. Okay, then we have the Pure Cosmetics and Raw Beauty Christie palette. This was her double-sided palette, so I'll swatch a few from each side. This was the more neutral side. Swatch this shade and then the one shimmer in the middle. This would probably be my favorite matte from the whole palette. I love that rosy neutral. And then we have the more colorful side. Let's, let's go with this yellow. And then we'll go with this. I've used the white in this like a ton. It's really hard to show you how the dip in it. But the white is a nice shade. I know sometimes matte white shadows can kind of be a little patchy or chalky looking, but not this white shade. Okay, then we have the Tartlet in Bloom eyeshadow palette, a definite favorite of mine. I've used this one a lot. I even have a five looks, one palette video on this one. It's, it's really hard to show because it won't start flowing. There we go. But this is a really lovely palette. 
And I think this is probably one of the best sellers, I believe, from Tarte. At least one of them. Then we had the House Labs Glam Room Number no. 1 palette. Um, I, I only use this palette a handful of times, and I don't know. I, I just didn't really see much of a quality there, but, you know. I understand this was the very first eyeshadow palette that they had come out with at the time. I just remember having trouble blending it. I needed to use it again and just kind of see, but... I remember having a little bit of issues with it. It's not my favorite palette, but I want to keep it because they don't even make eyeshadows anymore. And I am a huge Lady Gaga fan. If you can see here, that's my little monster tattoo. That's for her. Then I have the Glam Light and Hershey's Kisses Special Dark Palette. I always struggle to get there. We go. This was my very first Glam Light palette. I got it from TJ Maxx and it's really, really pretty. It's really amazing quality. Of course, I mean, I've been hearing how their quality was really nice, but I had never gotten a chance to try on myself. Really pretty. Then we have this one from Tarte. This is their, I'm getting my cellar water all over my packaging. This is the Salt Life Eyeshadow Palette. I believe this is was limited edition. You can't get this one anymore, but I use this all the time. You can see my dips in here. I just, I love this blob, this blob makeup. I love it. I'm sorry. I just love this palette, these palettes so much. I, I like when you can do, well, no, that, that shade didn't show up at all. Okay, well, I'll swatch. And my hand is getting kind of pink a little bit from the swatches, so it's probably... Let me build that up a little bit. All right, yeah, let me just swatch this shade instead. My hand's getting a little red. So pretty much all of the shades in here kind of have like a satiny vibe to them anyway if they're not full-on shimmer. So it's probably really hard to show you. So I'll just show you like that. But I do enjoy this palette. I know you can't get it anymore, I don't believe, but I do really like it. I like to use this palette for like one and done looks. Like you can just take any of these shimmer shades. And you can get an easy look. We got my little Natasha Denona. This is the mini love, yeah, mini love palette. Really pretty. Let's watch this shade. And let's watch this shade. I really enjoy Natasha Denona's formula. I don't have all of her palettes, in, or no, but I do, I do like them. I typically try to get them even though I'm kind of behind. I would honestly love to have more of her brand. Now there are a few palettes that I would pass on, like I probably wouldn't buy the, now I've heard people say, how do you say it? Is it Yucca or Yucca? I've heard both. I don't know how you pronounce it, but now I wouldn't want that palette. It's just not really for me. But some of her other palettes, yeah. Okay, then we have the Urban Decay Naked 2 little mini palette here. If I can get it open, there we go. This is just a little all matte all matte palette. I'm not too big into all matte palettes. I like to have shimmer. I like sparkles. I like glitter. So all matte palettes really aren't my favorite, but you can easily pair it up with other palettes too in your collection. And last but not least, we have this little one from Urban Decay. I think this was part of their stoned collection. I'm not exactly sure the full name. Really just cute little pops of color with these neutral tones. Thought it was a really pretty cute little palette to have. Um, let's swatch some of these right here. Swatch that matte shade there. Because this is the last palette I have to swatch, so I said, well, just try to squeeze them in here. And there we go. That shade's pretty. But there you have all of my high-end eyeshadow palettes. Just swatched a few of them. But as I said earlier in the video, if anyone wants to see full swatches of any of these palettes, then maybe the next time I do a video like this, I can include swatches of every shade in the palette. I just That would make this video really long, and I didn't know if anybody would want to see that or not. But I do hope that you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, I hope you will please consider leaving a like, a comment, or subscribing if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.